Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I wanted to share with you an idea that I think is really important to keep in mind when you're getting prepared for things, and that is the idea of things not having to be perfect. There are a lot of hurricanes coming in this week, and you know I could probably play this video anytime this fall, and that seems like that's gonna be a true statement. It's a really severe year for uh, hurricanes and tropical storms so far. That you know might have something to do with climate change, even though that doesn't exist. I'm being sarcastic. I think the climate change caused by humans is probably a real thing. I enjoyed the film, Inconvenient Truth. I know there were some factual issues with it, but overall I think it was more good than bad. I'm not a climate denier. Okay, now that we've gotten rid of all the people that can't stand to hear me say that, let's talk to all you guys that are still around, because uh, you guys are the ones that I want to help out. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of tropical storms coming in, a lot of hurricanes coming in, and I think a lot of times people who aren't into the like prepping mindset, and I hate the word prepper, I just, it reminds me of like preppy, hippies, I mean it's just, it's not a great word, <laughs> I don't like the word, but people who are preparedness minded, people like to be ready for things, and that involves, you know, lots of people, but, you know, there's a certain subset of people that like to be, uh, you know, prepared for storms, conflict, things of those natures. Uh, you know, people that, that fall outside of that category, I think, can sometimes feel daunted by the idea of being prepared for whatever, for storms and things like that. And I think one of the reasons is that, it, you know, in our, our kind of mindset, usually, I think we have this sense that, you know, if we're, if we're not going to be perfect at something, it's almost not worth doing at all. Uh, you know, half-assing it, it's like, you know, why, why, why even bother if you're just going to half-ass it? Well, you know, with preparedness, half-assing things is a lot better than doing nothing at all. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. If you're not a prepper, if you're not a preparedness-minded person, but you're in the path of any one of these number of storms that's coming in, there are a lot of things that you can do to make your life better when those storms come in. And you don't have to go, like, full-blown prepper to, to improve your lot. Uh, you know, during one of these situations. And, and that's what I wanted to focus on today is what are some half-assed things that you can do that aren't gonna make you feel like you're going like full on into like the, the prepping lifestyle or anything like that, but can make your, your family's life better if you guys happen to get inconvenienced or, you know, your life threatened by one of these storms. Uh, and let's break it down really quickly. Uh, you know, people in a crisis or in regular life need food, water, shelter and it's helpful to have other things like communications. Now I think a lot of times people think that like well you know you need you know gallons and gallons of water, giant cisterns in your basement and all that kind of stuff to have you know plenty of fresh drinking water. I think it's probably a good idea to have a couple of weeks worth of water if you're in an area that could have like major power outages where you could get cut off from the rest of the community and everything. Um, and having several weeks worth of water does not have to be this big thing where you buy all this infrastructure and everything like that. I'm going to show you right here. I got it on the ground in front of me. I'm sorry I didn't have a display table, but I do have to lean down out of the shot and you're going to be like, you're going to be without me for a moment. But hold on. All right, we got these things down here. I, I wasn't able to pick them all up. There are all sorts of things you can hold water in that you probably have kicking around your house right now. They're waiting for you to utilize them and, you know, you can either do that or not. This is an old pretzel container. This had peanut butter pretzels in it. I put some soap in here. I'm cleaning it out. I use these for all sorts of things. But this can hold water. Now the lid on here just screws on lightly. If I put it on its side like that, it'll, well, you can see bubbles already coming out of it. It's not watertight, but if you hold it like this, that's a lot of water you can fit in there. What else do we got here? This is a big jug that used to have pasta sauce in it. I've been using it for a while for white rice. I just made uh, some white, white, white rice last night and I used up the last of it. It's empty now, I'm gonna clean it out, fill it up with more white rice. But this is, you know, safe for use for drinking water. You could fill something like this up, just a recycled thing, just, just you know, you might find it in your recycle bin. This can hold a ton of water. Obviously, juice containers is just a you know glass juice bottle. I think glass is the best way to go if you have access to it because it doesn't impart any plasticky taste into the water. Uh, you know, so these are great to use. You can just rinse those out. Even something like this. You know, those other things are like, you know, gallons or like almost a gallon. But even something like this, if you have things like this around your house, picture this. You are, you know, you've been hit by the hurricane. You don't have fresh drinking water you know, you're thirsty, you know, you've been going all day, you're working, you know, doing whatever you need to do to like, I don't bail out your basement or whatever like that. You're, you know, you're just, you've been exerting yourself. You're really thirsty. Would you rather have nothing to drink 
or a nice full clear glass of water in here. You know, I mean, it's it's not much and you know, I certainly wouldn't recommend fill up one of these and like you're done, but even something like this, it's like that would be like a, a huge gift if you were super thirsty and you know, wishing that you would fill it up as opposed to not filling it up. So even things like that in terms of getting drinking water are the types of things that you can, uh, you know, uh, use to help yourself in the future and they don't cost you anything. I just pulled these out of my recycle bin. They were completely free to me and all I need to do is to fill them up with water, you know, ahead of a storm. Now, you can't fill it up like months ahead of a storm unless you're going to get into like, you know, purifying the water or like, you know, putting in some kind of like decontamination. People use like certain types of bleach to, uh, you know, to keep the water sta stable and not growing things. But if you fill them up, they'll be good for a week, you know, especially if they're like refrigerated or whatever, you know, you can, you can keep that stuff and it's, you know, it's not going to go like rancid in like, you know, several days or whatever. You know, I, I'm sure there are exceptions to that, but the idea is fill up something, have something on hand. In terms of food, you know, that's pretty obvious. You just go to the grocery store and stock up, but don't do it the day before the hurricane. Go ahead of time and, you know, there are all sorts of easy things that you can grab, but there all are other things that you can grab that, you know, are going to be a lot of bang for the buck. And Immediately when I start saying this list, people are going to have some ideas in their head. They're going to criticize that, like, well, here, here we go. Just big bags of rice, big bags of oats, big bags of beans, things like that. Those are the types of things that, you know, you can get a ton of food, a ton of calories into a small area. They don't require refrigeration or anything like that. You can just have those on hand and they can feed a lot of people. They can keep you sustained for a long period of time. Uh, you know, there are other things that, you know, like frozen things and, you know, you know different types of meats and things. And they take a lot of infrastructure to like kind of keep those things good. You know, just having basic grains, legumes, and things like that can keep people going. Now, I know that the flip side of that is people are going to say, well, you have to cook that stuff. Generally speaking, people don't level the same criticism against meat. They're like, oh, you're going to need meat. You also have to cook meat. No, well, not if it's going to be sushi, I guess. But, uh, you know, yes, you have, to, you have to cook certain grains, but that is something that you can take care of, you know, with just a small little cook stove or something like that. that you can use, you know, some fuel. I mean, there are all different ways of, of addressing that. Technically speaking, you don't really even have to cook the rice. You could just soak it and you could eat it like that. It's not quite as delicious, <laughs> but there are all different options. And the idea is to give yourself options in the future. They may not be the best options. It may not be perfect. It may not be, you know, this great delicious mountain house food that you can, you know, put together, but it's something and it's better than nothing if you're in a crisis sort of situation. In terms of your, your basic shelter, uh, you know, keeping yourself, you know, as warm and as dry as you possibly can, you can get a lot of uh, mileage just out of tarps and plastic sheeting and things like that. Uh, you know, it's not going out and buying, you know, like tents and temporary shelters and all, all that, but in a pinch, having a tarp is generally better than not having a tarp, a tarp if you're in a situation where you wish you had a goddamn tarp. So get some things like that. You, you don't necessarily have to know exactly what you're gonna do with them, but having those kind of things in a pinch, if your roof starts leaking and you're having like, you know, drips happen all over you and everything, just having a tarp to cover things up can make your life a lot better. The other thing uh, that is helpful to have is just some basic, you know, uh, ability to get some communication, to know what's going on in the world. And I know a lot of people will have like, you know, solar arrays and like solar backups and everything, like if you really get into the preparedness lifestyle, but you don't need to go all, you know, I don't want to say all crazy, but like all crazy, you know, doing that kind of stuff. You know, you can just go to an electronic store, like a computer store and get a computer backup uh, battery supply, you know, like, like APC makes them. And it's just the kind of thing where it has a, a you know, battery in there and it makes it so that like if there's a power spike, you know, going through your, your computer system, you have a little bit of backup power. If the power goes out, you can like shut your computer down and everything like that. Now those kind of things, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying you should buy those so you can run your computer and like, you know, you know, be gaming <laughs> or whatnot during during crisis, uh, you know, because batteries aren't going to last very long to you know actually use a computer. But the amount of battery power in there is immense when it comes to you know running a small radio or charging up your cell phone or any any of those types of functions, where you know you have so little power inside of your phone or whatever. You know, the amount of battery backup that you can have in one of those things can charge you know, lots and lots of phones over and over and over and over again. So if you are seeing some of these hurricanes come in your general direction, you don't have to go full prepper to make your life better in the event that one of these things hits you. Don't, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. You can do some good things for your life, small things that can mean a lot to you 
in a crisis situation where you wish you just had one more drink of water. That's it. Make some small changes in your life, make some small preparations, and they can take a really terrible situation and just turn it into a really bad one. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.